Hi guys, it's Chippy from Ultrabook News. I've got the Lenovo Twist here, the ThinkPad Twist, uh, that I want to show you in this video. It's a Core i5 touchscreen convertible Windows 8 uh, Ultrabook. Uh, Core i5 with uh, 4 gigs of RAM, hybrid hard drive, and only a 1366 by 768 screen. It's pretty compact, pretty nice. This is it here. So, Actually, it looks pretty ThinkPad-like. It's got that nice glossy rubberized finish, and it's quite easy to clean as well. So a lot of these rubberized finish can be pretty difficult to clean, but I just cleaned this up in uh, record time uh, just now. Nice and compact, and a pretty stylish shape, if you ask me. This is not uh, a wedge shape, but it's it's fairly stylish. There's nothing uh, nasty about it. There's a silver trim on the edge here, and uh, it's a fairly rectangular shape, nothing special about it, but uh, stylish all the same. Um, open it up and you've got, uh, of course, that 12.5 uh, uh, inch 1366 by 768 screen. Let's just boost the, um, boost the screen brightness on that. Probably have to come into uh, to Windows to do that. Let's boost the screen brightness, put that into Windows 8 mode. Um, Nice ThinkPad keyboard, not backlit, and maybe not quite as good as the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, but that's obviously uh, a little bit more expensive in terms of price. Um, I do like it though, it suits my slightly smaller uh, fingers, and I love the uh, touch point on this one as well. You've got normal uh, mouse pad, which is a little bit small and actually a little bit sensitive for me right now. I've got to adjust that. But overall, this sort of working phase here is really, really nice. And uh, possibly, uh, apart from the Carbon X1, one of the best I've uh, I've used. Um, I do like the Samsung Series 5, but I think this is slightly better. Um, the touch screen here is 5-point touch. Um, obviously, you've seen Windows 8 being demoed before, so I won't go through that. It is a glossy screen. Um, but it's IPS, so you know you get uh, reasonable viewing angles. I won't say perfect viewing angles because there is a slight drop off in some brightnesses at some angles. And I'm looking at that on the screen there, um, but pretty good. And of course, that's really important when you do that. And that's the trick here. This is a uh, rotating convertible screen. So when you get into uh, portrait mode, screens that are non-IPS have slightly different balance color balance and brightness balance on the left and the right. So when you're looking at it like that, you get a very weird 3D um, effect. This is really nice to use in portrait mode. Um, and as you can see, not too heavy, but this is not really your sort of consumer focused tablet. 12 and a half inches, one and a half kilos. It's really too heavy for, it's definitely for one handed use, or you do, although you do have a little bit of space on the left hand side to, to hold it quite nicely. But um, this is probably one you're gonna put on your lap or you know the classic sort of belly stance and of course one of the advantages of having that flip screen is there you go you can do the layback thing here and uh, you know you I think I found that pretty good on previous um, touchscreen convertibles that I've had like that's this for example the gig gigabyte touch note that I had for a year and I used as my main uh, device was pretty good like in that mode but this is not a tablet okay let me quickly take you around the device though and show you some of the ports. The ports are pretty good on this and uh, I'll talk about some of the other uh, performance aspects of it as we go around the device. Let's zoom in and take a look at that then. Okay, let's just quickly whiz around the device for you then I'm going to close it up and uh, I want to show you the ports because the ports on this are pretty good. Um, headset port there, so that's combo, headphone and microphone. USB 3 here and that um, is just super speed. I'm looking for the uh, sync and charge light on that, but it's not there. HDMI mini, full U uh, Ethernet port there, and I believe that's gig Ethernet port. Full size SD card slot there. So with the IPS screen, although this is 1366 by 768, there's some potential here for or for photographers. The IPS screen is, is pretty nice uh, from multiple angles. Here you'll see there's a SIM card slot, so that shows you that there's an option for 3G on some devices. This one doesn't have the module built in, unfortunately. Kensington keyboard lock, really clean across the back there. There's the hinge. So um, let me quickly talk about that hinge. These um, rotating hinges can be a little bit surprising to some people because they do wobble a little bit. But that is just the nature of these center point, center mount points here. It's just very difficult 
uh, to get a solid, um, solid mount there with this rotating capability. Um, having said that, it is also uh, an advantage in some cases to have some flex because uh, if you knock it accidentally the flex helps to absorb and dissipate some of the the impact so be careful if you if you have one that's really really tight you might find it might be a disadvantage rather than an advantage going back on the back then that's pretty clean on the other side you've got the Lenovo power port here mini display port here on Ivy Bridge that's 1.1 a um, so that goes up to over uh, full HD resolutions. Uh, USB 3 here, and again, I don't see the uh, sync and charge like there. This is the fan output here. One thing to note about the fan output is that when it's in tablet mode, if you're left handed, that's where the fan exits there. That's where the fan exhaust is there. So I'm left handed. Uh, so I actually use my right hand for uh, for touching. Sorry, what am I saying? I'm I am left-handed in writing, but I'm right-handed in holding things and using uh, touch. I use touch one. This is a strange, strange uh, method I have. But anyway, that's the uh, the difference uh, with me. So the exit is on the left. That's all. All that needs to be mentioned there. Those of you that are holding on the left, touching with the right, that's where the exit is, and that gets warm. The fan is on most of the time, but it's not noisy. And in fact, um, in testing this, I found out that Lenovo have done quite a good job in keeping thermals down to a good level, which means that things like Turbo Boost hang in there for an extra long time. And in fact, in some uh, Cinebench tests, I saw Turbo Boost hanging in at 2.4 gigahertz for the whole test, and that was about um, four or five minutes. So like the X1 Carbon, uh, you can really get a lot more out of this Core i5, which is a nominal 1.7 gigahertz, than with many other devices. For example, Samsung Series 5 under battery power doesn't even use Turbo Boost. So, this is tuned a little bit more for performance than for quietness um, or, or coolness. So, um, where was I? Yes, I was on the other side talking about the fan. Now, one thing you want to notice here is that there's a single screw access to a 2.5 inch SATA drive. In this one, it's a hard drive, hybrid hard drive, and I think there's 24 gigs of SSD on board Samsung SSD is a separate drive viewable in device manager so obviously some flexibility in, in maybe installing the OS on the SSD although I haven't done um, speed tests on the SSD point is you can swap that out pretty easily it's one screw pop that off pull this pull the hard drive out pop yourself in a two and a half inch uh, uh, SSD and uh, you're away with uh, a lot better performance. The hard drive, it's a Hitachi in here, is not fantastic, although with, of course with the uh, SSD cache that does help. Express cache uh, ties that all together, which um, isn't a bad caching SSD caching system. So there's nothing else accessible on the bottom, although you have got screws all around, so um, yeah, of course you can take the back off and uh, potentially access the memory because it's got uh, a memory little sign there that says uh, that indicates memory is accessible and um, not sure what that one is as well that's the hard drive I think sign keyboard of course so maybe and of course because you've got the uh, 3G module there's probably an MSATA port free so you might even be able to drop in an MSATA drive on top of the hard drive on here so that's pretty interesting in terms of the options there All right, let's open it up take a look inside so as I mentioned, keyboard's pretty good, there's no backlight on it, uh, function key, keys are reversed, so easy access for brightness etc. Um, there's volume control buttons on the front here, let's just uh, zoom in for you there. Volume control buttons here, you've got the um, Windows 8, uh, let's just uh, open that up, you've got the Windows 8 button here, so you can get back to the menu just pressing that button there. On the right hand side, just down here, you've got a rotate lock and standby button as well. So talking about uh, screen rotation, it is locked uh, when the screen is open, but as soon as you put it into tablet mode, switches on rotation, so you get proper uh, rotation going on there. So 
that's uh, that's pretty good. It prevents the screen rotating when you've got the keyboard open. One thing to mention, though, is that if you've got it in this mode here on your lap and you are just thinking of adjusting the screen angle like that, what happens is that the uh, system tells Windows 8 that it's now being used as a laptop. So when you go and try and access on-screen keyboard, it doesn't pop up. What you have to do is pop that down again, and then you'll get the uh, on-screen keyboard to pop up there. So it's a little bit of a design fault, actually. If you want that on your lap like that, or if you just want to use it like that, which is a totally sensible way to use this device, there's no on-screen keyboard. Now, I might be able to tweak that. There might be a setting that allows me to, to do that. If you, if you know about that, please drop up a comment in the video uh, underneath. On the screen, of course, IPS 1366 by 768, which on a 12 and a half inch screen isn't too bad a DPI. There's uh, there's a lot worse. You can still get 15 inch devices with 1366 by 768. So the density here is actually, I think, pretty good uh, for desktop uses. On the default settings, you can you can access screen um, buttons pretty easily and. Uh, I, uh, I actually think it's uh, pretty good, 1366 by 768 on this is pretty optimal, especially if you're mobile, especially if you're on a train um, and the thing is moving around, you want slightly bigger fonts. Of course, bumping up the DPI on Windows 8 isn't uh, fault free, um, so um, personally I'm not too worried about this. Quite a few apps installed from Lenovo, they've got uh, Service Center and Solutions Center and Backup and they have pre-installed Norton and a few other things. Um, li a little bit overloaded, I believe, with, with software. And you can see in the background that there's quite a few tasks running, 80 or so tasks, not not over the top, but uh, it does. you do, do get the impression that there's uh, something going on in the background all the time. And of course, you've got a hard drive here. So that's one thing you don't want happening. You don't want stuff running in the background when you've got a hard drive. It really can slow stuff down to the point where it can actually um, cause uh, lockups. My recommendation for the Novo Twist is to go for an SSD version. I've tested the hard drive on this. It's not the fastest, and especially 4K read speeds are very, very low and um, will impact the performance on this uh, device. Of course, Windows 8 is a little bit uh, intelligent about the way it uses disks and cache, so you've got Express Cache running as well here, so after a few days you might find um, everything smooths out pretty nicely, and uh, certainly today it's been a better experience using this than, than when I first switched it on and started messing around with it because I did see some some stutters there. Um, so just a few other things. Wi-Fi module in here is a Centrino series, I think 2 series, uh, 2000 series, so it's not top of the range but the reception is, uh, is pretty damn good. Um, if I can actually just switch that on right now, I can tell you that on a two wall test here we've got four bars for my uh, local network which is pretty rare to get four bars down here so the antennas which I've got up, up here are pretty good on it. What else did I want to mention? There was one or two other little things. Dual array mic here which is probably beam forming and a low light uh, webcam there. There's a shock protection, protection on the hard drive um, and I think that is pretty much it. Overall I'm pretty impressed with it, in fact pretty excited about it my only problem with this device so far is that the battery is relatively small. It's a 47 watt hour battery, which for a 1.5 kilogram device is not that great. Uh, for example, the HP Folio 13, which came out a year ago, has a 62 watt hour battery, so much bigger for the same weight. So clearly here, um, having the touchscreen and this um, hinge means it's it, the base unit is slightly thinner than it than it uh, could be uh, and they've had to slim down the battery which is a real shame it means this device um, hard drive based is only bringing in about four to four and a half hours of usage um, heavy usage is going to take that down below three hours and if you're gaming don't expect more than two hours out of this uh, core i5 device desktop capable of course and I really like the fact that the turbo boost on this uh, allows you to get a lot more out of the Core i5 system than you might do on on some other devices. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad. Um, there is a preview up on, uh, on ultrabooknews.com with my first impressions, pretty detailed actually, almost a, almost a full review, uh, but I will have a full review up on ultrabooknews.com 
um, very soon. Um, stay tuned to ultrabooknews.com because I've got a couple more devices coming in next week. I have a Toshiba U920T, the slider, which is a very similar style to this, but the, 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 the screen faces out and then slides up to reveal the keyboard. Um, and I've also got a Clover Trail based uh, Acer Iconia W510 coming in, and that of course is um, an Atom based system, so it'll be interesting to see what the trade-off between performance and battery life is on that because you get a lot more battery life on the Clover Trail systems but of course it's performing uh, in terms of CPU probably probably about a third or a quarter of the performance that this Core i5 uh, system has. So that's it, thanks for watching, my name's Chippy, ultrabooknews.com is where you need to go to find out more and we'll be back soon on another video, thanks. <laughs>